Greetings at QRZ. I'm Herb and 6MGW, also known as the Trivia King. And today I'm going to talk about the Insomniac Net and the wind system. If you're not familiar with the Insomniac Net or the wind system, they are an amateur radio events and system. The Insomniac Net started about 1980 as a simplex net at Orange County, California for the West Coast Amateur Radio Club. The net was held nightly at 11 p.m. on 144.330 megahertz simplex. It is surprising, but sometimes we would get close to 100 people checking in via simplex radio. That is everything has a life cycle. The number of people started dwindling. And there were a few times where only four or five people would check in. Then one night we got a new guy, Terry, N6WI. Terry worked at HRO Radio in Anaheim, and he liked the net so much, he started promoting the, the net at work, and the antennas started to grow again. Terry might have been one, the one responsible for moving the net from a two-meter two meter simplex frequency to the Santiago repeater, which is 70 centimeters. Next, Shorty, K6JSI, joined the group. Shorty's one of the people that like to build repeaters, and he's responsible for some of the many repeaters in Southern California. Shorty also owned the wind system, which was a couple of dozen repeaters linked together in Southern California. Through Shorty's repeaters, we were able to get check-ins from San Diego to Bakersfield. <clears throat> Eventually, the IR, IRLP came along, and the wind system started expanding through the IRLP uh, 9453, which is channel 3. Then the All-Star system was introduced, and the wind system expanded again to All-Star node hub 2545. Of course, with expansion of the wind system, the Insomniac net also expanded. Today, in 2018, the Insomniac net is probably the most successful net in the world. Typically, we get 100 people checking in seven nights a week, 365 days a year, and they've not missed a night since 1980 when Ty, NO6U, and the West Coast Amateur Radio Club started the net. We regularly get hams from Israel, Australia, Canada, Europe, and every state in the Union, even Japan. It's been 38 years, I'm not aware of any other nets that are that, are that successful. There may be some older HF nets, but not with this number of people checking in. If you know of one, please let me know in the comments section down below. Amateur radio nets are intended to provide a means where hams can use their radio equipment. If you do not use your radio on a regular basis, you forget how to program in frequencies and how to set up the sub-audible access codes. If you're not familiar with your radio, you'll have difficulty using it in an emergency such as an earthquake or other disasters. Or worse yet, you'll find out you've got a dead battery. And typically the Insomniac Net control person publishes a set of three or four multiple choice trivia questions on Yahoo groups via the Insomniac Net group. It's Insomniac-Net group. <clears throat> Once you join the group, you'll receive a fresh set of questions via email every night before the net begins. You can check in via RF, or if RF is not as available, you can check in via email. And the Insomniac-Net group also has a reply button where you can submit answers through Yahoo groups. Usually it is easy to Google the questions and find the correct answers. However, we consider that a no-no. We want to make it challenging for everyone, and if you're the hundredth person on the list, it's not right for everyone to check in with the right, correct answers ahead of you. On the other hand, it's not fair to ask everyone to wait an hour to hear the correct answers. So we suggest you write down what you think the correct answers, and use those answers when you check in. Then go ahead and Google it and confirm your answers. In addition to hundreds of hams checking in from around the world, we also have a lot of people listening on scanners, and they either enjoy listening or submit answers via email. And there are a lot of people that don't have scanners or ham radios that just listen to streaming audio on the windsystem.org website, or they just visit Yahoo group and check in. 
To join the Insomniac Net, you can check in as a guest or visitor to the net. There's a time slot at the end of the net for visitors and guests to check in. If you check in two consecutive Sundays, you'll be added to the Sunday night check-in list and called on a regular basis. There's a different net control and a different check-in list for every night of the week, so you need to get established on every night of the week. You need to check in two consecutive Mondays to get added to the Monday night list, and two consecutive Tuesdays to get added to the Tuesday night, etc. through the week. And if you disappear for a couple weeks and you don't give us a heads up, you'll probably be removed from the list and need to get reestablished again. So if you're going to go on vacation, make sure you tell us that we'll save a spot for you. Each net control structures their check-in list a little differently. But basically, the, most senior, the more seniority you have on the net, the earlier you'll be called. If you are a net control person or a frequency control person, you'll be called first. Then if you're a paid up member of the wind system, you'll be called next. Then all regular members are called, and this is the largest group of members. And then at the end, there's a slot for visitors and guests to check in. Unfortunately, there's a lot of crazy people out there that are intent on disrupting the net. This is usually in the Southern California area. When this happens, we turn off the input, the Southern California repeaters, so you can listen to the net, but you cannot transmit on the Southern California repeaters. This way we can continue the net without interruption. If you are one of these Southern California people trying to check in, be patient. We will eventually secretly turn the repeater back on and give you a call when everything is settled down. <clears throat> the input to the Southern Cal net repeaters may be turned off and on a dozen times in an evening. If you hear one of these people causing problems, please ignore them. Pretend you don't hear them and they will get bored and fall asleep when no one acknowledges them. At one time there was an obnoxious guy named Jack that was causing pros problems on all amateur radio frequencies plus several government frequencies. After ignoring warnings by the FCC, he was arrested and we now call him Jack in the Box. Today good ham radio operators are reporting these people and they are being prosecuted and put in boxes and their radio equipment is being confiscated. Each net control has a list of thousands of hams that have checked in at some time in the past. When you check in as a visitor, you'll be checked against this list to verify you are a licensed ham. If it's your first time, you'll be able to check in. However, the, after the net closes, you'll be checked out to make sure that you have a valid license. We are always looking to talk with new hams so if you are listening on a scanner, streaming audio on the wind system website, we hope you'll take the exam and get your ham radio ticket. There are books available, published by the ARRL, that list the questions and answers to enable you to get your license. The three levels of amateur radio license. You start with your first license as a technician class. This gives you privileges on frequencies above 50 megahertz which is basically the line of sight to uh, repeaters on top of mountains. Then there's a general class license which gives you privileges of high frequency for radios which you can talk around the world. Then there's the extra amateur extra class which includes all amateur radio privileges which are included above plus additional frequencies. The days of learning Morse code are history and most of the questions on the exam are relative to do's and do nots of amateur radio, such as what frequencies you can do and what you cannot do. For example, you cannot conduct business for profit using amateur radio. You are tested on the rules of amateur radio as defined by the FCC. If you're new to amateur radio, let me give you some uh, website links you can explore. The first one was www.winsystem.org. That's W I N S Y S T E M.org. And here you can check on streaming audio and listen to some of the nets. Then there is the www.irlp, which stands for Internet Relay Linking Project. And then there is the www.allstarlink. A-L-L-S-T-A-R-L-I-N-K dot org and that's the All-Star Link Network. And 
www.hamradio.com, which is HRO and the supplier of uh, amateur radios. And then there's the www.arrl.org, org, forward slash find, F I N D, dash an, A N, dash amateur, A M A T E U R, dash radio, R A D I O, dash license, L I C E N S E, dash exam, E X A M, dash Session S E S S I O N, and this will tell you or show you where you can get your amateur radio license. To take the test and get get on the air. That's all I have to say for today. If you like the subject and want to be notified when I publish a new video, click on the subscribe button below, and YouTube will send you a message that a new video is available. I do not ask for a credit card, it does not cost you anything to subscribe. Subscribing just notifies YouTube that you want to be notified when a new video is published by me. And if you think this video is informative and you think other hams will enjoy this video, click on the thumbs up button that suggests to YouTube that they should promote this video to other hams. In closing, let me say 73s. All right, here's those links again. You can write these down. This is the windsystem.org. The next one is the irlp.net. That's the Internet Relay Linking Project or program. And I'll also include these links in the comments below, section below. And this is the www.allstarlink.org. And this last one is going to test how fast you can write. www.arrl.org forward slash find an amateur radio license exam session and put a minus sign or a dash between each one of the words after find.